Hello boys and girls, I'm so glad to be able to chat to you guys again and I brought my special friend Bert along and he's going to be chatting with us today. So, hello Bert. Oh, uh, hello Cameron. Bert, what are you doing? What is this thing stuck on your face? Oh, uh, it's a smile. Uh, a smile? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm trying to smile all the time. So I, I don't want to stop smiling. That's weird. Why don't you want to stop smiling? Because if I stop smiling, then I'm not happy anymore. Oh, Bert, that's a bit of a funny thing. Because happiness comes and goes. What? You mean, if I keep a smile on my face, it doesn't mean I'm happy? No, not a paper smile. That's not going to keep you happy. Happiness, it comes from your heart, deep inside here. And sometimes you feel happy and sometimes when things go bad you feel sad oh no i want to be happy all the time well that would be lovely but it's not going to really happen but guess what i've got good news for you the bible tells us that we can be full of joy all the time Ooh, joy 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 that sounds good tell me more about joy well Joy comes from because we know God and we know His love in our hearts and even when things don't go well or don't go our way, guess what? We still have love in our hearts because God loves us. Oh, oh yeah, uh, it sounds good, but I don't know about this. You see, it's like if I say to you, Bert, you can't have a cookie. How would that make you feel? Uh, uh, I guess I'd feel a bit sad. Yeah, we would feel sad because we really want the cookie. But if you've got joy in your heart, then you would remember the good thing that, hey, even if I can't give you a cookie, I still love you. Yeah, yeah, I feel good when you know that I love and I'm loved and, and, oh, that uh, I'm still full of joy. Well, that's it. But that's really difficult. I mean, I don't think anyone can do that. Did anyone be able to do that before? Well, there was a guy in the Bible. His name was David. Have you heard of David? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, is that the guy that killed Goliath with a sling? Hey, was it him? Yeah, that was him. That was David. Yeah, well, things went well for him. He killed Goliath and everyone liked him. I mean, that's cool, isn't it? I'd be happy if I were him. Well, David was happy when things went well. But then things went really badly for David. Because the king, who was the king then, King Saul, was trying to kill him. Oh no! That would make me really sad. Well, I'm sure it made David kind of sad. He had to go live in the desert. And he had to be running away the whole time. People were chasing after him. People were trying to kill him. Oh, it was not nice. He had to struggle to find food and yet to live in a cave oh oh no i would not like that that would not make me happy at all and i'm sure it didn't make him happy but guess what david had god's joy in his heart even then because we read in the psalms that david still felt god's love and god's joy in his heart even when things were going so badly i i know a psalm uh, we learned it at Children's Church. It was Psalm 23. Uh, uh, let me think. Uh, the, the Lord is my shepherd. I got everything I need. Amen. Well, that's the first verse of Psalm 23. But it goes on in Psalm 23 when David says that even though he goes through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, that sounds so scary. He says, even if he goes through that, he's not going to be fearful. And then he says in verse 5 of Psalm 23, he says that, he, that he, where he is and where how he feels is that God prepares a table for him in the presence of his enemies. That means even when he was feeling scared and the people were coming to capture him, he had God's joy in his heart. And he felt, you know what? God's right here. And God is going to be my friend. And I can have a meal with God, 
Even though my enemies are all around me, even though things are going really badly, people are trying to kill me, God's still here. And God and I can still chat. And we can still have a lovely time and a fellowship meal together. Wow! I think David really had joy. Because I couldn't say that if people were trying to kill me. If my enemies were there, oh, I'd be so scared. David did have joy. And he had joy because he knew God was his father who loved him and cared for him and would look after him. And so he could see the good things even when things were going bad, badly for him. Oh, well, uh, uh, let me think. Um, oh, I got an example of how I can do this thing. Yeah, what would you say? Well, if I wake up in the morning and it's raining, oh, normally I'm so like, oh, I'm so cross, I'm so sad, it's raining. But now, now I'm going to think, well, if God is in control and if God still loves me, uh, God's bringing the rain to help the farmers and to help the plants. And, and I can go stomp in the puddles later, so I don't mind if it's raining. Well, that would be a great example, Bert, because that would be a way to see that even when things don't go our way, we know that God is still in control. And He's going to use that, and we can use that for something good. Wow, that's so cool. But, but I don't know how to do this. I mean, how do I get this thing to change in my heart? Well, that's something that only God can do. God's Holy Spirit needs to come into our hearts and change us. And, and how did he do that? Well, we just pray and we ask him. We say, God, please put your joy in my heart. Oh, do you think we can do that now? Because I'd love for more joy in my heart. I want to see God and enjoy God much more and not get worried about when things go wrong. Well, that's a great idea. Let's pray together. Cool. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you that you love us so much. And thank you that you died on the cross for us because you love us so much. And I pray that you would help us to remember that. We pray that you would put your, that your Holy Spirit come into our hearts and put your joy in our hearts. And help us to remember that you're always working for our good, no matter what's happening around us. We ask Holy Spirit that your fruit of joy would be in our hearts. We need you to do this because we can't do it on our own. Amen. Amen. Well, I think I'm feeling better already. And I'm going to start looking for all those good things so that I can be full of joy. And then I don't have to worry about being happy anymore. Because happy will just come. That's exactly it. Happy comes when we're full of joy. Wow. Thanks, Kelvin. Hey, guys, let's go have some fun and full of joy. Bye. Bye. Well, uh, guys, I hope you had a good time with us meeting Bert. Two weeks ago, we learned the difference between joy and happiness. And today we had a look at how to live on a daily basis having joy. And so I thought it would be a great idea to finish off our series on joy by making a paperweight. And so I thought this is what we could do. We could find a rock and decorate it write the word joy on it and pull out that verse psalm 23 verse 5 that uncle kelvin mentioned today where um god prepared the banquet table for david amongst all his enemies meaning that god brings joy even though circumstances are not great and then pop it next to your bed or on a whole lot of your schoolwork just as a constant reminder through your day that it's it's Jesus who brings that joy and we can live daily with that when we ask God. So I hope that is going to be a good help for you in this season. And I hope you have a good week. Till we see each other next time where I've got some something really, really cool to share with you. Bye for now.